Today we're going to talk about Hard Maze. This is my character loadout, so Death Strike and Life Steal will help. There's a lot of characters that have those abilities. It will make life a heap easier. So Dodge is going to be your best friend, and I'm not talking about the ability. I'm talking about it'll take a bit of practice, but learning the way that monsters attack and just staying out of our range, keep moving back a bit. So these uh, wizardy dudes here that shoot these uh, balls at you, they're actually pretty good to practice your dodging on. So if you can learn to uh, the timing of it, so as they shoot, dodge. And just here, I'm going to lose a bit of health to show why that lifesteal can be so handy in these early ones. So this is an unawakened character that I've used in for this video. Obviously, having an awakened character makes it that much easier again. And Insane Maze is pretty easy because it lets you wear your dungeon gear. One of the other things I suggest doing is plan your layout. So maybe just use one ticket at first to learn where the uh, level ups are on the floors so you're not uh, being just off a level up and having to use the altar because there's nothing else to kill. Or even on the Hunt Royale Discord, they do release the daily maze maps which will give you an idea of where the healing pads are, where the altars are. So as you can see, I took all those hits in that first room to get down on health, and with the lifesteal, without even going to a healing room, I'm back on full health. So you can just back off, and instead of taking multiple at once, just slowly kill one at a time, and that lifesteal will help get your health back and regenerate it again. And obviously, as you level up, you're just going to get stronger and stronger, so your hardest flaws realistically will be these first ones. So with the dragon here, it's obviously going to hurt a bit. So just try and keep it at the very edge of your range. So now Death Strike just made that really easy again. And so I just like to 100% it. That's just the OCD. You don't need to. You can plan your layout. You can run straight to the boss. Uh, obviously, if you're trying to beat Hard Maze to unlock Insane then the higher level you can get in the dungeon, the better off you'll be. So if you can try and get a level 6, it'll be a big help. So again, if you want to practice your dodge, you can just pull these dudes out one at a time and just uh, practice going backwards and forwards. Because as you're going to see at the end, that's going to be a big advantage against the boss once you get that down packed. And even things like when I run Abyssal, you can learn the uh, movements of Scythe Mages and monsters like that, for example, and learn how to dodge them to avoid those hits when you're early level. So obviously Hard Maze only has the five floors, unlike Insane, that has 20. And Hard Maze is also a good way to get gold. So running the Insane daily will give you gems, but running the Hard will give you gold. And character cards, which is also good. So when a new season comes out, I'll use um, most of my maze tickets in the hard maze just to get those extra cards for a new character that comes out. And that's how I often get those awakenings done on day one. So a little bit of movement speed can help with the dodge. So just try and find a character you have where it can be for the day. Obviously, you don't get to select which character. It will change each day. But if one has Death Strike and Life Steal, it will make your life a lot easier. Just helps get rid of those harder ones while you haven't got as much. So there, I've planned it out. So I've got the level up first and then the older. So I've got the double level up. And now I'll go get the experience to keep it going and hopefully try and get level six before we get to that last boss. So again, we don't have to do too much. You can take your time, take it slow, take one at a time and just keep kiting them around and just keep moving them back to make sure you're not getting hit. So obviously those shrines that I'm ignoring there, they are the healing altars if you do need some extra health back. But with the lifesteal, I just never really find that it's necessary. So we're on five now, and this can be the trickier one where those maps uh, come in handy with preparing because you could run straight into a boss room if you're not paying attention. So because I need these couple of extra rooms here, this one and one more monster room should level me up, and then I'll have that level six that I'm hoping to get before the boss. 
Now, sometimes I'm not sure if it's a distance thing, if it depends on the day or it's random, but sometimes I have the boss just stands there and shoots at me non-stop. That'll make it really easy to beat. And other days it will summon the mobs and do the healing. If it's summoning mobs, again, Death Strike will help with clear that and just run around. You don't need to be on the boss straight away. Run back and use the corners of the fences to your advantage so the boss can't be shooting you while you're taking out those little creatures. And I'll run back in. So going back to that dodge that I was talking about, learning. So here I go, I just move backwards and forwards. So take a short move, take a short move. And it will take a little bit to get the hang of this. You won't get it straight away. But if you get the timing down, you can literally just kill the boss like this without losing health. And that makes it that easy. So again, it will take practice. Don't be disappointed if you don't get it the first few times. I have done this quite a lot now. But just slightly going left, right, left, right, and keeping him on the edge of your circle. And if you keep doing that, you should just not be hit by any of these. And he can take ticking away. And there we go, we're done. That easy. I hope it helps. And if it does, please subscribe to the channel.